It's the Mad Hatter Show's podcast. Yet another one. I know. Thank you for having me again, Neil. Yeah, Neil Snyder with Sandy Rusk. We're doing this again. If you're seeing us on your Facebook feed, you probably follow a page that uh, is carrying this. Mm-hmm. Or maybe at one point you followed Mad Hatter Shows, and uh, here we are. Right, right. We keep going up. I, I, I've, I've been posting in a meme group. I've been putting the memes up, and I've been... So I put the memes up. God, that fucking music is just, like, <laughs> beating in my head. I guess it was probably getting ready to go off, and I shouldn't, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been posting in a meme group, and then oh. when people think we've got funny stuff there, I'm like, yes. "Ah, do you want to see? The, you want to see the page?" And I've been sending the invite, and like, I, I gain like 30 people a day or something. So that's my trick right now to help build the page. So if you've done that, and you're like, "What is this? I thought this was a meme page." Uh, hey, we're advertising our stuff. So. Uh, <laughs> and you're debuting a new look today too, I, Neil. I am. I, uh, I lost a few pounds off my face, so. Um, <laughs> Got that knocked off. Had Someone to, said earlier you look like a newborn baby, and yeah, I, I guess a, a newborn baby that is gray. So that is uh, <laughs> that's sad that that's how low I've I've put the bar. No, but, that's uh, good. Yeah, I got rid of the Santa beard uh, in the midst of this heat wave. I guess there's some, uh, you know, looking forward in life kind of thing. You know, every now and then I just love need like a wholesale change. So well, you definitely look a lot younger. Okay, I maybe not that. newborn baby young, but yeah, definitely younger. All right. Well, the Mad Hatter <laughs> Shows page uh, is here to basically advertise our upcoming events. So we're here to uh, profile uh, Greg Hahn today. And then later on the show, somebody who's already been on some uh, Mad Hatter wrestling shows. Um, and she's done some much bigger things as well. Uh, Shauna Reed will be here. So in the meantime, um, you're going to let you kind of preview the different things that we have coming. We do mainly comedy shows, but also... Uh, you know, special events, unique events, mm-hmm. sometimes music. Um, you remember in Napoleon Dynamite where uh, Pedro shaves his head? Yes. <laughs> They're going to segue into that. Uh, yeah, Napoleon Dynamite is joining Mad Hatter Shows again uh, mm-hmm. January 17th. We will be debuting at the Eura Seeger Auditorium in West Lebanon, Indiana. Oh, wow. Yeah, they've got like it's a high school. They've got like a whole setup with like professional sound and and all kinds of stuff. Like it's nicer than most of the places that are out there. So, um very cool for that to be in a very small town in Indiana, you know, like 30 minutes from my house. And uh Perfect. we're bringing Napoleon Dynamite back. So there's my I I I got my head shaved and my beard off to plug Napoleon Dynamite. I there guess you that's go. how we it goes right along with it. And now that's done, and it's going to take me four months to grow that back. So, but that's where we did the show uh, earlier in February in Louisville. Uh, we've actually got a few other 2024 shows coming. I believe we're going to be in Miami, Oklahoma, with these guys. So, um, it is fun to uh, to reunite, and that's one of those special type events that's not just a a stand up show. You know? Definitely audience participation in that. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's family friendly where not all of our shows are. So that's another one to consider. Yeah. If you are anywhere within an hour or two driving distance of West Lebanon, Indiana, I mean, it's not that far from Illinois, um, right there on 74 west of Indianapolis, uh, you should come out. It's about a 90 minute drive from Indianapolis. And, uh, you know, that's a fun one that we're happy to have back on our calendar. And, uh, yeah. Very good. And apparently that one there is uh, advertising one for a different venue from a different year. So I need oh. to <laughs> I need to trim that video up the next time we show it because I didn't expect it to go all the way through. So well, they can always go to Mad Hatter Shows. MadHatterShows dot com will have our show. Yeah, that's yeah. uh, this is what live podcasting is all about. The, Correct date and time. It's going to be there. Just hold the vodcast. Yeah, this what's going on here. Um, another shows uh, series of shows we introduced. On the website this week uh, that were not brought up last time, Kayvon is going to be making his debut with Mad Hatter Shows as well. Yes. And uh, Kayvon sent me that video, so it's whatever we get, it's what we get. But uh, this is from his Dry Bar special. Um, this is somebody that I've actually seen his post shared on Facebook like before I knew that we were going to be booking him. So oh, this is awesome. one of these guys that's kind of, uh, if I find you organically, then you must be big because I'm mm-hmm. kind of lame. Even though I look younger, I'm old. So that's (laughs) a thing. But Kayvon will be doing shows in um, 
Three places in uh, northwest Indiana and in, into Illinois. So we've got Hobart and uh, Fort Wayne and Joliet, Illinois. And those dates are going to be in November. So you'll definitely want to check out the Cave On shows. And uh, you can pull him up. Like I said, he's on Facebook. He's on YouTube. He's, he's pretty well everywhere right now. So, yeah. And then the next week, we're going to be having uh, somebody you know, Mark Skippy Price, will be reuniting with us. It's been a minute <laughs> since we've had him. Yeah. Um, I think that's how we met, actually, was through a Mark Skippy yes, Price show. That's so, right. Uh, that yep. should be fun having him back. We're going to have him in Terre Haute, <laughs> Indiana, and Richmond, Indiana. And, uh, you know, he's always a lot of fun. It's already yeah. on my calendar for sure. Yeah, I want to say it's been since 2015, 16 since I've worked with him. So that's when uh, I first met him was uh, 2015. Well, no, actually before that, maybe 2012. But worked with him in 2015 on my project. So yeah. and hopefully our, our core audience here, the Mad Hatter audience, is old enough to remember him on Family Ties. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in Indianapolis, it was ironic as we were involved in this project and as we were running around town, how many people were like, oh my, you're him, you're Skippy from Family Ties. And it's like, how are they recognizing him? Yeah, all these, look all exactly the same, but, no, uh, no, not at all. But they loved meeting him. So I, it's the same thing with Jimmy Walker when we're out and about too. I'm just like, it's been 50 years. How do you still like know what this I guy know. looks like now? I like know. things have happened. He looks old, but it's it's it's. And as soon as he speaks, it's you can't he can't deny that that's who he is. Oh, so. 100 percent. And I've met him as well. And the same thing. You just they just know. Yeah. Well, we're going to preview more shows coming up uh, with some some little video packages. But uh, we've got a. Show coming in two weeks to Nebraska. Uh, we want to bring on your headliner right now. It sounds like he's here. We heard he's the here. doorbell. Hey. Well, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Hi, Greg. You all right? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We're going to try to keep up with your energy, but I, I can't. Oh, it's nice and blurry, blurry and horrible. Great. Mad Hatter, let's party. <laughs> Come on, I got a show to do. <laughs> So we were bringing up before you came on here that I have opened for you a couple times. I'm like, this guy doesn't remember me, but Ace's Pub in Lafayette. Are you remember those spots? Yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah you know. Right next to uh, the what, they call those hell gigs. <laughs> well, they always wanted us back. There you go. Yes, yeah, so I've been on that the couple hell gigs with you. Uh, we're going to be going to Nebraska, though, to a uh, couple fun spots. One of them is going to be a debut for, for Mad Hatter shows in North Platte. North Platte, how do you pronounce it? No, it's called a rural Nebraska. And then we're going to be in Phillips, which is outside of Grand Island. And last time we were there, they were bussing them in. Like it was, uh, there was parking attendants and that kind of stuff. It was the, the hottest shit to happen in that town probably that year. So, um, all right, let's do it. Good people. We'll go nuts. <laughs> Let me ask this. Can you hear me okay with this setup? Yeah. I got the computer balanced on pillows with the blue thing behind me. The whole interview is based on that blue thing behind me. So, uh, we're going to rely on the blue thing. We're going to do what we can here. <laughs> we just need your energy, Greg. That's all. <laughs> but, I, but I'm clear enough. I'm clear enough for an interview. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You're doing well. well you're, you're not as sharp as we are, but you're you're even, you've got a little red tinge now when you move forward there. So it's, uh, we'll see how this goes. This is, this is live podcasting. Yeah. The highlight of your oh, career off here. <laughs> Obviously, folks know you from uh, from the Bob and Tom show. Can you give us a little, uh, you know, a little rundown of, of how you connected with those folks and uh, became kind of a fixture on that show? Yeah, I was playing a club in uh, Greenwood, Indiana. Su uh, Super Dave Wilson was the owner, and he said, "Hey, you're going to play the Bob and Tom show. You're doing the Bob and Tom show tomorrow." And uh, hey, there I am on the Bob and Tom show. So anyway, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I've heard of that show. I know people try to get on the show." So I got on the thing. I went bananas. And I didn't really even understand syndication and all that kind of stuff. All I know is when I got done doing the show, I got a call from Wichita. And they're like, hey, will you play our club? And I got a call from different affiliates. And it went from like basic headliner, nobody pay, to door deal pay. And it changed. <laughs> my and I bought a couple of houses, baby. All right. The rest That's is so history. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my... It was my Huge break. I think it did a lot more for a lot of people than uh, the late night TV shows have done since like the 80s. Wow. You know what I mean? Really, they're really complete. Why I sat in L.A. for 20 years, I don't know. You know, <laughs> they're like, what do you got coming up in L.A.? 
I got a gig in uh, Cincinnati, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I think. I got a gig in Des Moines. I got a Delta flight on Wednesday to Des Moines. You know, anywhere Bob and Tom uh, is, that's where that's where I've gone. That's where I've made my career. The best. Okay, so you've that's gotten awesome. in those those secondary markets uh, sometime, a lot of Midwest uh, spots like that. But um, right. it seems like, yeah, you could put Bob and Tom on that poster, and it's uh, it's like an endorsement. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that show's going to be good. Absolutely. Right, yeah. Yeah, and it's good. It, it worked for me because, you know, I, I'm basically clean in my show, and I try to get to the punchlines quick. So for radio, that's, uh, you know, worked out. It's perfect. There's a lot of very, very clever guys that are dirty, and they get on uh, the you know a radio show like that, and uh, they can't really even do their act. So it just happened to fit me perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I remember you're you almost don't let the crowd die down from the previous joke, and they're already laughing at the next joke. Like it's like I, I can't compete with that energy. Like, it's like how, what are your secrets to getting that that pumped up when you're getting ready to go on stage? I just, I, I just, uh, I'm trying to get it over with. I don't like people watching me when I work. You know, I, I just like to do my jokes and get out of it. You know, I'm not. You know, there's these guys that are like, oh, my favorite time in life is when I'm on stage. Not me. I mean, I like people. I like talking to people, but I, I really don't like to be the center of attention. Oh, so I like really? to. Get, and when I watch a, a comedian show, I, uh, I like it quick. Um, get to the whatever you whatever the comic thinks is funny. I hope he gets to it fast. So that's what I do. I try to do what I think I would like to watch. Sure. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Well, it's very. No, but it's funny because people watch me and they're like, uh, "This guy is, uh, you know, when is he going to stop doing this?" And then, like five <laughs> minutes le later, they're like, "I guess this is what we're doing." <laughs> <laughs> that energy is something else. We'd like to be able to bottle that. Yeah, sure. Fine. It's fine. Whatever. It's, I'm fired up. Well, what I do is, is I go crazy on stage, and then during the day in the hotel room, I put the AC on frostbite and hold perfectly still like a mummy, you know? <laughs> so it's not like I'm that way all day long. So, okay. uh, you know, I, I have to I have to be a member of society. I don't want to get tased. So I'm calm during the day. <laughs> get those rooms that... Uh... that energy for later, right? Those rooms where it can go down exactly. to 61, 60, like that's the those are the ones. I hate the hotels where it's like locked at 65 or 68, as low as you can go. And I'm just like, I, I this room's not going to work for me. You need a colder? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing is when I go to a hotel, I'm just like, what is the coldest temperature? And let's just put it on constant fan. Like that's that's it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I don't want to do a whole lot during the day. Like, you know, people saying, hey, I'm going to show you around the town. Or uh, if you bring a date, I want to go to the water park. You know, you got to <laughs> look at eight o'clock tonight. I am the water park. You know, That's I don't I, I can't burn up any energy. Like I know the drummer for Chicago. Remember that band Chicago? Of course. Mm -hmm. I think he went to the like one of his last concerts with the band. He got talked into going to the zoo and he showed up at his huge, you know, there's huge venue exhausted and could barely play his drums. Anyway. I don't go to the zoo. No, no, you got to save that energy. Well, I don't know that there's a lot going on in North Platte, Nebraska, and Phillips, Nebraska. Like I think, you know, we are going to be the show. That's the that's that's the thing. Show, so, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set up all right. Are you have you been there before? Though I mean, these are Bob and Tom affiliates. Uh, yeah. You've been in a yeah, I've been there. I've been there. It's beautiful. It's all great. You know, I'm sure they got stuff to do. They probably have lakes. It's the summer, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like someone's going to invite us to water ski. We can't go. You know, they have, they have grill outs. They drive around all year long in those crazy vehicles with the treads on them through the snow. You know, they're maniac outdoors people. <laughs> I remember we went there. Uh, our hotel was in Grand Island, and this was with um, uh, the late Donnie Baker um, and uh, and Jake Rubel uh, was there with me. And and we got up there, and we're like, "Look, Ron does not want to come two hours early while I'm setting up all the speakers and all that." Do you guys have Uber or Lyft in this town? And the guy behind the counter goes, "Yeah, his name is like Richard, and he works at the grocery store till two oh thirty. But like, here's his direct number, and if you message him directly, like, he won't go through the app. Like, there's one guy that they they could recommend in the town uh, for your traveling needs. Oh my, good people, good people. Oh my." <laughs> <laughs> so what is that? I mean, you've you've performed in in large venues, and you've performed uh, probably in the dive bars and the hell gigs, like you were talking before, and all that. Uh, totally. Do you prepare differently, or is it just every show's the same? What what goes through your mind when you're? You, you know what I do? Here's what I do. I walk in, I take a look at the situation, I talk to people in town, I read the paper, 
And then I do the act I've been doing for 30 years. Come on. <laughs> awesome. No, I'm always working on new stuff. I'm always working on new stuff. But I mean, compared with these famous guys, I'm not as prolific as those, as those guys. But then again, I spit out jokes like, I'll think of a funny word. And uh, that's it. You know, what's that add to my act? Not even a second. But I'm always working to make things. Or even my old bits that I've been doing for decades, I'm always trying to make them better. You know, the problem is sometimes I'll see an old video myself and I'll go, that was better. And then I go back to the old way, you know, <laughs> but I'm always working. I'm always working on it. Right, right. Have you ever been going past uh, Comedy Central and seen yourself on, on Tosh.0? Oh? I have, well, Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen myself on Comedy Central watching TV with my father. He gets the clicker and changes it. And he turns to me and he goes, why do you talk so damn fast? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which was good. It was a relief. I didn't want to sit there and watch me. I knew the jokes already, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. There's the, uh, the the prep work I did for this interview. Look at the dedication oh, I went to with the, the Google right. images. So. That's when I was that's when I was running for president. Yeah, which uh how that how that work out? Uh, I didn't win. Didn't I did win. not win. <laughs> I think it was uh, I think it was a mildly humorous bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Who are some of your your influences growing up? Like, who, who's the people like, you like to watch? Who doesn't like uh, Rodney Dangerfield? Did you like Rodney Dangerfield? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I liked him. Isn't it weird when you start off as a comic? You know, you'll start off and you're going and you think you're being yourself, and then you watch years later, you'll watch an old video of yourself, as I was saying, and you'll be like, "Why am I doing an impression of Rodney Dangerfield?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you doing? Yes. You know, there's another great comic named Peter Potofsky. Look him up. The funniest guy in the history of the world. And I can I I see myself doing a you know trying to act like him, and then uh, I like Steve Martin and all the real wacky guys oh, back in the yeah. day as well. Yeah, right. Sure, sure, Dude, Steve, sure. Steve's live show was lots of energy as well, so oh. I can I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah. I love, but any comic, you know, we all do different stuff. Anybody that's really great at what they do, it's hard not to just you know not to admire them, not to enjoy them. Because mm. I enjoy the great crowd workers, like a lot of the you know like. Uh, Ian Bag is a great crowd worker, or Todd Barry. You know these guys, mm -hmm. or uh, whatever, whatever their style is. If they're the best at it, I'm always entertained. Yeah, a couple of my favorites Again. are, are G-rated yeah. and X-rated. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's the, this wide spectrum. People people are shocked that I can watch a Doug Stanhope special and a Jim Gaffigan special back to back, but like, they're both yeah, they're great. Both great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? You know what's interesting is uh, I'll walk into a club. Let me know if you ever did this. You walk into a comedy club. And you see all the pictures on the wall of all the different comedians that have been there. Mm -hmm. And when you first start out, you're looking at each picture going, oh, that, that comic's tremendous, great, unbelievable. And then you start to sing, I shouldn't even be here. All these <laughs> comics are, this is what this place is used to? Fast forward like a couple decades, right? And you're like, dead, hack, that guy, <laughs> unwatchable. They're lucky I'm here, you know? Here you hack, go. hack, that guy's got that guy's act. You know, whatever. You get a little more, uh, I don't know, what is it, confident, critical, something. Yeah. You get jaded, I think. That's a, that's a, a <laughs> good word. So it's, it does. It, this becomes a, a, a task, though. It becomes a chore sometimes. Like, I remember I, you know, I didn't start till I was in my mid-30s, so I'm, you know, a decade in or so. And I remember um, the weekend we had Pro Wrestler Raven. We were doing some shows. He was doing, uh, like, some storytelling and some comedy and meet and greets and this kind of stuff. And I remember by night three, I was tired of driving him around from city to city. And I was like, you know, six months ago, like this would have been like a dream for me to be able to say, like, I'm going to hang out with this guy. But after I've done one or two shows, it's like, OK, what's the next thing? You know what I mean? Like it's it's, uh, you know, you've scratched that itch. And now I'm just like, I got to take this guy to 7-Eleven in the middle. Of the no, night. no. They, well, that's the thing is you don't know what to say no to, especially when you first start off, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, you shouldn't have to drive that guy around. Hey, will you pick up such and such from his hotel? No. That's not my job. You know, but you do. But because you're worried about getting in well with the club and whatnot, you follow all their rules. You got to go pick the guy up. You know, don't go out with the wait staff. That's a ridiculous rule. Later on, you learn how to, you learn to ignore and break all everything. 
Mm-hmm. I'm at a fan conference in in Baltimore, Maryland last summer, and I see Jimmy Walker. I'm there as a fan to like take pictures and stuff. Jimmy's like, "Hey, at three o'clock, I need to go to Walmart. Meet me in the lobby." I'm like, "I'm not working <laughs> with you this weekend, Jimmy." But uh, you know, you get that whole like, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm the hospitality guy. I'm the the you know guy that works with Mad Hatter shows. So, mm-hmm. um, so we went to Walmart and I um, ran diversion for him basically. So. I, I've definitely been there too, where I had to finally say to a friend of mine could you please uh go and have fun with this person and of course mm-hmm. she was you know starstruck so it worked out great so what you're saying is i'm not going to have a to-do list in nebraska for you like you're not going to be high maintenance you're gonna... no no i got it all i got a car i have a car i can get to walmart i can go my i can go get my old spice body wash by myself there you go there you go Look at that. He's going to smell like Old Spice. Madheadershows.com to uh, check out Greg Hahn on September 1st and 2nd. Uh, first night's going to be in North Platte, uh, Nebraska. Uh, I'm going to, well, I will find out before that night's over if it's Platte or Platte. With a I think you got it right. I think you got Platte. There's no way Platte. they say Platte up there. There's just not. There's, yeah. there's no way to say that. I think, no, uh, I think that's true. It's not something you say when you're drinking a bush light like that's a... Uh, and then uh, Phillips, yeah, Phillips was upset that uh, you know John advertised it. He's like, we're going to call it Grand Island because that's the big town, you know. And then, and then, so now we're doing Grand Island slash Phillips because it's like 18 miles outside there. You turn down a, a country road or something, and there's a flashing light, which is the only light in town or something. I don't remember, but it's a it's a really nice venue though. It's like a it's a community center at the end of a um, a drive, and and uh, you go in there, and it's it's all set up like a like a museum in the front, and they've got mm. all the stuff in the back, and they've got their own uh, kitchen in there and all that. So um, definitely uh, remember those folks. They were they were fun. Uh, Beautiful. So. Yeah. So yeah, I like the Dakotas. Isn't that where we're going? Dakotas or Nebraska? Where are this we going? Nebraska. We can do the Dakotas <laughs> later. We've we've been to the Dakotas. So that's uh this is the first weekend with Matt Adams. Nebraska's Hopefully. great. It's like a uh, like a, a test run for us to see if you're willing to put up with us. Uh, I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. Are you kidding me? It's gonna be great. I wonder if they have drum sets there. They got a drum set. They got a drum set around. Put it on stage. I'll go nuts on the thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, do everything we got. Sounds Absolutely. like a great idea. Absolutely. Well, people are like, why? Because I can play the drums. And people are like, why would you play the drums? Because it's loud, makes no sense. <laughs> a drum solo, just like my act. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are not familiar with you, but they have the opportunity to get to Nebraska. Where's the best places to find uh, you know, your best stuff online? Where do you plug all your stuff? Oh, I don't know. You go you can go to greghahn.com. That's a corporate show. Website. That's a website being worked on right now. What is that? Is that my website? What is that? Yeah, that's what the producer pulled up. Mm-hmm. I think that's your website. Right? Okay. Okay. There's that. Uh, you know, there's some videos on Twitter at Han Comedy. I'm on Twitter or whatever it's called now. X. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. Whatever. You can go on YouTube. There's endless stuff on YouTube. Endless stuff. Yeah. What's that? that? Twitter? There you go. Yeah. Watch. Here, just watch that video. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> from the Dol- that's from the Dolby Theater in uh, in Hollywood, mm-hmm. like three thousand seats. That's great. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Just is. like just like Phillips, Nebraska. So that's a <laughs> Phillips is going to be better. Those people are going to be better than the Hollywood people. Man, you never know where Mad Hatter is going to put you to. Like we, we've done, we've done the big theaters, but Everything. you know, John John will find a venue. Like it's he'll be like, here's a historic theater from you know, it's not had any live events since 1938, and some guy just bought it and put some money in it, and we'll be like one of the first acts that go mm-hmm. on there or whatever. We'll show up at a, an American Legion that looks like a BW threes in the front. Like it's just it's 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 wild. <laughs> like the places he finds. Uh, but, I'll uh, do it. I'm a member of the Legion. I'll do it. I'll do it. Awesome. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we'll see you here in September. Uh, get your tickets on MadHatterShows.com. Appreciate you calling in tonight, Greg. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to do the whole party. Can't wait to do it. So and the great. blue thing worked. Start up right now. <laughs> the blue thing worked. We got you on, on camera the whole time. So <laughs> success. Success. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. I'll see you. <laughs> Thanks for the nice interview. Thank Alrighty, you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
A good he's, time. A lot of energy. He seems like he was yeah. well behaved. I think that that's. He was. Uh, I didn't exactly know what to expect, but these are going to be fun shows. Like I, like I tell people a lot of times when they're debuting, Mad Hatter shows is kind of like a badge of honor. I'd like to think at this point, like yeah. if you're if you're able to do shows with us, you can you know, it's nice. So we're going to be inducting a new one into the fraternity here in the the Midlands of the United States here in a couple of weeks. So I was really laughing today when I was looking at his stuff online. It'll really be a lot good. of fun. I'll be on yeah. that show, and somebody who's sometimes in your seat, uh, Riot, uh, is going to be she's going to be tag along. She's going to be helpful uh, there at the event, and uh, probably selling merchandise, selling some drinks, and maybe we'll get her a set too. So you never know. He seems like uh, he's he's pretty chill. That I could say, hey, you want her to do some minutes? He'll be like, hey, let's do it. You know. So that's. Yeah. Um, I would think he would be that way. Couple fixed years uh, with Mad Hatter uh, opening those shows, and then the great Greg Greg Hahn uh, from Bob and Tom show. So. That should be a lot of fun. We've got another guest calling in here a little bit, so do not disconnect. Do not move your browser. Do not, uh, you know, you can you can keep us running and go pee or or you know grab some snacks <laughs> or something. But we're not even done here, so let's uh, let's bring up some other shows we've got coming up here. Somebody we saw on the previews coming in here, Dave Dugan, um, is going to be a, another event coming up here. Now this event is going to be at Tippies in Winnemac. It's a venue that I book a few times a year. and uh, But it's a different setup than the Mad Hatter Shows setup. So you can't get your tickets on madheadershows.com here. You're going to need to uh, call Tippies. It's in Winnemac, Got Indiana. It. Tippies Pizza and Beer is another one of its entrances uh, in, onto the Google there. But uh, you can, can take a look there. The phone number is probably popping up during the telecast here too, periodically. But uh, we just had Dave in the Echo Room in Lebanon, and uh, he'll be doing the room in in Winnemac there too. So Sheila and our friends there in uh, Winnemac, we're happy to to get back there. He was a lot of fun a couple of weeks ago here on the show with us. Yeah, absolutely. Another Bob and Tomer, another Bob and Tom veteran there. So definitely uh, make plans if you're in the area to see Dave Dugan. If you've never been to a Dave Dugan show, you got to get to at least one. Like mm-hmm. that's uh, something that's out there that should be done all right we've got more shows coming up uh ed bassmaster is this weekend so maybe maybe we should spend extra time talking about ed because this, this weekend you can get to see him see a couple of his different characters up there that's mumbles talking to the screen right now and it's chip diamond in the the red and in the the multicolored Coogee sweater. <laughs> I was going to say, that sweater is uh, trademark. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I, think this, I think this video might have been recorded in Evansville at our show, actually. Really? If you look there like before the, the show or something. Because it, it reminds me of um, the room that we did the Evansville show at. There's but, the sweater. <laughs> um, we've been doing several shows with Ed lately. And uh, this weekend, three different cities, three different states. Three different nights. So we're actually going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee at Cotton Eye Joe on Thursday. That's a c- cool spot to go. Have you ever been to Cotton Eye Joe? I have not. Yeah, it's a country bar. It's pretty famous. It's got the mechanical bull there and got oh, all yeah. the decorations on the inside. They do line dancing. and so, awesome. Even after the show's over, like people will still be coming to, to, to drink and party because that's what they do sure. at this place. It's a lot of fun. So um, the 24th... Um, might as well get there early and see Ed Bassmaster. There's meet and greet tickets available. There's uh, VIP and regular seats. And he's got some merchandise because I imagine I'll be behind the table selling that stuff. So that's uh, I'm going to be in the building as well. Come say hi. Um, but that uh, the show on Thursday is going to be in Knoxville. The next day we're going to be in Pikeville, Kentucky, the Appalachian Center for the Arts. And the day after that we're going to be in the Rona Theater in Ironton, Ohio. Ironton is like equidistant. It's like it's like one of those places where you're you're really close to Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and I think West Virginia. It's 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 like one of those points where like <laughs> you can end up in four different states without driving too far. So it's got a it. Spot there. If you've never been to Ironton, like uh, Killer B says, save up. But it's a fun uh, fun theater that we've been to. They had a pickle beer the last time I was there. Oh. So I don't know if they'll have it again this time, but wow. uh, definitely have to check that out. Mm. And you like this? It was it was not bad. Okay. I don't know that I would want eight of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if it was one of yeah. those nights, I don't know that I would I'd drink that many. I think my acid reflux. But to 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 drink one kind of mm-hmm. quickly while it was still cold. 
be good. It's not necessarily a sipping beer either, but it's. Yeah. Uh, I had it with some pizza, and it was it yeah. was good. I, I think that would probably be good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, another weekend coming up with Dave Landau. We had him on the show last we weekend. We did. And uh, his his Indianapolis and Hobart shows were moved to December. So uh, yes. you're gonna hear us plug this for four more months. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, I moved it on my calendar. Yeah, and if you didn't get a chance to see that podcast, you might as well. Uh, Go where all good podcasts are played or go back to the Facebook page and pull up that interview. Um, unforeseen circumstances. We had to move the dates, but they are still on. Your tickets, if you have them, are still good. And he's going to be in Indianapolis December the 15th and also in Hobart, Indiana on December the 16th. So definitely uh, you should check him out. Check him out on Blaze TV also. His show Normal World is on right now. Some like really can, funny stuff on there. You can stream it. I don't know that it's on live right now, but you can get on there and you can can hit the button. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. A couple other shows we still have not brought up that we have to preview. Josh Prey is coming up sooner than later as well. We've gonna have, we're going to have him in September. Uh, I think the first dates are in Ohio, in Cleveland and Toledo. Then he's going to do that same uh, little stretch that uh, Kayvon is doing, the, the Fort Wayne Hobart, Julia, Illinois, mm-hmm. uh, stretch there. And then we're going to have him out in Iowa. So, um, and those shows are going to be in November with the Iowa shows. So I think we're coming up with eight or nine Josh Prey shows coming up. He'll be debuting with us. Um, he's got several million followers on all his different social medias. He's a, a Southern guy, uh, kind of fits in with a lot of our fans. A lot of our fans know him. I've seen some people are, are getting excited that uh, we've got some shows with him coming up. So he's selling a meet and greet also. And uh, the first two shows were going to be in Cleveland at the Temple Live and then in Toledo at the Mommy Indoor Theater. So madheadershows.com. All over the place. You never travel to see us. You're always like, if they're at the Irving, I might go. <laughs> well, I do need to do more of that. And I will definitely be in Richmond in November. Yeah, with yeah. Skippy. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the I've thing. got we friends just, who live out there, so I'm already. You just have to lure you with people you yeah. like. But I think you'll <laughs> think you'll like Kayvon. I think you'll like Josh Prey. So. Yeah, I'll um, have to do more traveling because it's always fun. Well, a lot of times, too, like those guys will already have an Indianapolis show on the schedule. So right. we don't necessarily get to book them in our backyard right away. So right. um, you take the, the other the other shows as you can. But we've actually we've become kind of a, a national company at this point. Like we are all over the place. Yeah, like he brought up yeah. the Dakotas. And I'm like, well, we're not there this weekend, but we do South Dakota already. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. do Minnesota, which is right there by North Dakota. So it wouldn't be a big deal to go in between. Yeah, so. if people follow you, it's like, where is he now? <laughs> yeah, I do I do traveling on my own and I do traveling for work and a lot of a lot of miles on the old Kia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. It's good. You're having fun out there, I know. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More shows coming up also with the biggest name in comedy, Kostaki Economopolis. Uh those are kind of as we're talking about uh yeah. talking about guys that are on the Bob and Tom show uh you're going to be seeing him more often uh, here with football season coming up also. He's going to be more probably pushed, I guess, because he's mm-hmm. the, the all-pro lines guy, got the NFL humor. Uh, I like working for, with him also because his fans like him, and he's a little dark, kind of like I am as far as our humor. You know what I mean? Like I like working with silly people and working with the clean folks, and I like I, I do different things, but like his crowd, I can be kind of – kind of dark you know i could be kind of kind of kind of dark dirk uh, dirk kind of dark and naughty and kind of you know what i mean like it's uh yeah um i like i like his crowd so uh we're gonna actually be together in ashtabula ohio coming up we're gonna be together in erie pennsylvania and uh a couple more venue venues coming up too and i'm not i don't remember where they are uh but i think the october dates are the ones i just named um, and, uh, we've even got some that aren't on the website yet, uh, January, 2024, um, that I believe are coming. So even though I think there's four currently for sale on the website, I think there's six or eight that are already, um, uh, confirmed. So, um, you know, if you like Kostaki, keep following madhattershows.com and you can see the different times that we're, uh, going to be able to have him in a theater near you. And then somebody who just made their debut with us. Um, a couple weeks ago, last month, was it? 
the end of July, so about a month ago. Shelly Belly um, will be yeah. doing another one with us. Yeah. There she is, all excited. <laughs> And uh, we're going to have her in uh, Cincinnati at the Redmore. That's another one of our kind of home base uh, places. And uh, that'll be fun to have her in Cincinnati. Now, her show in Indianapolis, we had her on a double bill, like a double headliner, um, back-to-back comedians thing with Andrew Kahn. Uh, in the role of Andrew Kahn this time, it's going to be me. So... Um, <laughs> That should be should be a good thing. Also, I'm looking at my other screen here, and I did tell people wrong. Ashtabula and Erie are going to be January dates uh, with Kostaki, so I'm actually going to be in the South with him in the October. So we're going to be in Florence, Alabama, oh, and wow. in Oak Grove, Kentucky. So uh, apologize to anybody that was excited for traveling to Ashtabula, Ohio, in the fall. You can wait till the winter time. We're actually going to be going Fort Campbell there on. Uh, on October the 12th, and then the 13th will be in Florence, Alabama, right outside of Muscle Shoals, and uh, I'll probably have whatever that, that Morgan Wallen song where he sings about Muscle Shoals. I'll probably have to play that as soon as I roll into the neighborhood, so that's a lot of events. I don't know how you keep up with all of them. And we knocked them all out before the second guest even called in. So you know how a lot of times it gets to be like 10 o'clock, and I'm just like, oh, we're talked out. I've been working all day. And I'm like, oh, no, I have <laughs> nine different tour shows that I yeah. need to plug. And we've knocked all those out. So as a fan, like, you know, you, you, you come to some of our shows, right? Like, what I, are yeah, your, of course. What are your thoughts about our lineup coming up? Wow. Who do you have it's, circled it on the counter? amazing. Well, obviously, we know my um, favorite, Skippy. Um, that's already on my calendar. And. Gosh, everyone, I, I can't wait to see both of our Daves that we had on a couple of weeks ago, Landau and um, our two Daves. Dugan. <laughs> there we go. You're like, that's my favorite. <laughs> I don't know his name. Well, um, yes, I definitely want to see both of those. Um, just they all sound great. They really do. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're. Killing a few minutes here, waiting on our next guest to call in. And I think um, she wears a number of different hats. And I'm going to make sure that we don't have any problems on the site here. So uh, She's going to be an interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. to talk about. And just like I just uh, the, as on command. She read your mind. At the exact 9-4. I think she was waiting for it to say 9-4-0. <laughs> And then hit the button. Now we're She's not going to we're not going to go straight to her yet though, because I actually have I got a video clip that we're going to show. So people that are not familiar with our next uh, our next guest here, okay. I'm going to check out um, what Donna. she does. Uh, yep, there she is. And all of a sudden, me doing stand up comedy, I feel kind of like a pansy when I watch what <laughs> she does by comparison. So yeah. Do you have any hobbies Look like at her this, Sandy? Go. Mm, <laughs> not exactly quite like this. No. I used to go outside the ring a lot, too. I noticed that. So there's like a lot of the clips yeah. I was going through. Or they were, uh, uh, yeah, no, I don't think I'd want to get in the ring with her. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Especially if I had to dress like that. You don't have a... You don't have any outfits like that at home, Sandy? Mm, uh, she just no. had an anniversary, I bet you. <laughs> Pulled one of those things uh, out. Oh, well, no. <laughs> All right, let's go. Shauna Reed, how are you doing tonight? Hi, Shauna. Hey, how are you? Good, good. We're great. Nice to see you. You too. Hey, who else is with us right now? Oh, I literally just walked in the door from my house, from my job. And so he's excited. Yeah, this is Buddy. He's like, I haven't seen you all day. So I have to, you know, sit on your lap for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I have to say, you look a lot different coming in from work than you looked in the videos. Yes, yes, I am a hot mess. I just worked a 10-hour shift, so excuse that. No, no, no. I, no. I did 12 hours earlier in a, in a call center. I found that pro wrestlers and comedians have a lot of the same things in common with like the way we approach road gigs and the way we have almost like open mics. Like there's a, there's a Friday night, you know, uh, 
uh, league in Indianapolis where it's almost like a tryout thing where you go to be seen and it's, you know, you're, you're carpooling with people to get to, to gigs and you're pulling money together. You know what I mean? Like there's just a lot of, a lot of similarities. Uh, how did, how did you get started doing, doing this? Um, so it was literally pretty much a geeky childhood dream. Right. Um, I started playing the video games with my brother, um, on the PS2 cause we would always fight over who would play the ps2 so my mom had to like schedule certain times of which ones uh like what we would do and so uh when it was his turn he always wanted to play wwe and um if i wanted to play at that time i had to play what he wanted to play because it was his scheduled time and um he would start quizzing me on the wrestlers that came up in between and then pretty much it was all history after that i didn't even know it was a real thing and so um yeah, so I got into it, really got into it, and then uh, my favorite wrestler at the time was actually from where I used to live, so I contacted his trainer and started training with him. Wow. How long ago was that? Uh, almost eight years now. Oh, wow. Okay. So I think we've got a photo here from about six years ago. I don't know if you remember. I'm sure this wasn't the highlight <laughs> of, uh, of of your early career. we got a picture here with uh, a young Shauna Reed uh, meeting Neil Snyder. At an event uh, ah. for uh, big time wrestling. Oh, How about this? You guys. So, oh my god! <laughs> one of us is aging better than the other currently, and uh, we'll let people at home decide which which they think it is. But uh, <laughs> about that? Yes, so. I was still a copy. I remember that because I literally had just. So I I'm a nurse. So I literally had just gotten off work at that time and like drove straight to the show. And I was in my scrubs when I first got there, and I literally just changed. <laughs> and like, you know what I remember about that show, and this probably won't surprise too many people. There was a Mr. Gaddy's food truck there uh, when I got there, because this was like a show at the fair, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, yeah it was like in some like park. It was like in like a baseball parking lot. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, this the the uh, this is another thing like comedy. Like we're talking to Greg Hanna beforehand, and he's talking. He's, he had a video in a three thousand seat. Uh, theater and i'm like we're doing a community center in phillips nebraska <laughs> like like not all shows are are built the same and i remember the the ring was strategically placed underneath a parking lot light so that it would be illuminated uh, as the show went on yes oh. yes good old time good times good times <laughs> <laughs> so you've come up quite a bit we've got a, a, a graphic that uh shows with an AEW event that you did recently um What's the what's the path like to get to one of the big couple ones uh, to to end up on a on a is that dark or what was the that was dark that was my first dark ever against Brit um, that was actually during COVID so we did that in front yeah. of like um, no literally no fans um, and that was actually filmed at like three in the morning because oh. they had to do two yeah it was terrible. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like no, I uh, I trained with Dustin Rhodes, and like I like he was, you know, so um, just impressed with me, and he just like put his name on me, and literally I was invited to Dark uh, right after I graduated his. School. Oh. Wow. So, so there's people like the average person that knows a little bit about wrestling. Uh, in Indiana, you talk about wrestling. I remember growing up, it was just like, oh, Dick the Bruiser. Like that was the only right. thing that anybody brought up. Like this, and then there was WWF, and then there was WCW. Um, currently, AEW and WWE, and then the Impact. Some people might know those. They might know Japan. They don't realize that there are hundreds of federations where they can go watch uh, wrestling. You know, all over the world every weekend, basically. Um, I guess in a, in a few sentences, tell people about what the indies are like. What's a, what's an, what's an indie show compared to watching one of these other ones on TV? Living hell. Um, I mean, um, <laughs> nice. It is there. <laughs> it is 100%. I mean, like it's, it's different in many ways, but it's the same in many ways. Obviously it's not your 100, like 1000 seat arenas. And it's not like, obviously the huge production and the multi-million dollar things like that but it is you know classic wrestling you're gonna see the wrestling moves most places you'll see a story most places you'll see you know a good guy and a bad guy and that's what you're fighting against and all that um but there are some shows like i've done a show in front of no joke four people <gasps> before wow and 
Right yeah, when you say that, and- he pulls up my show. We had more than four, Jason. Uh, the <laughs> Mad Editor <Shows. laughs> Oh my I, gosh, I picked, yes. And he found I picked moment, it at random. Yeah, he found a moment where you're not having a good time. Uh, no, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, a little backstory on this. Um, there was a bar in in Monticello where I was doing comedy shows, and yes. they were like, "Hey, can you get us a wrestling show?" They wanted me like middleman a deal, and I was like, "Well, I, I could," but kind of like she's talking about, like I, I I like to write, I like to do both. I'm like, I I'm gonna I'm gonna do this show myself, and uh, so go. we did. But the first show got rained out. Like we had to bring Aww. everything indoors. Um, we had to make a. We had to make there was no top rope moves allowed because you would have hit your head on the ceiling. But uh, the second show, the the uh, the the weather cooperated and we did it outdoors, which I'm sure that uh, that Matt was not not cool when uh, Shauna was was falling upon it. Uh, <laughs> you remember that show too, or they all run together? We do because yours was the only show that you got. You gave me and Paloma like an actual like. Um, like camper, like when we were in a camper to change and get ready. And we, that was the only air conditioned place in the whole place. And I left my dog in there, not the one you saw earlier, but Maggie. So oh. she chilled, she chilled in there. <laughs> but yeah, like, and all I know all the guys were so jealous of us because me and Paloma had the only air conditioned place in the whole place. Aww. Well, we had a catered room though in the garage. Like I was, like, like I did. I booked that show like a fan, and I like I totally ran it like a fan. That's why I don't do anymore because like I like I would I would be hungry if I was trying to run wrestling shows all the time. But it was fun. It was fun to do it. Um, oh, there's a there's a moment where you're uh, making Scott Powers not have the the best time uh, as well. So this is I think a run in uh, later after your your other match. So and I, and I wrote that out. I wrote it like an episode of Raw like from the from the late nineties. Remember the end like we had all the run ins and everybody was you know, yes. It was, it was like set yeah. Up I was getting and attacked and you had like the <laughs> the the good like guys come and. <laughs> Yes, I remember. <laughs> have, have you ever have you ever had somebody go over the show with you and you're like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Like, does that does that happen? Or you you know? I mean, you definitely have like where they're like, oh, we're gonna we want you to do this, and you're like, like in your mind, you're like, this is the stupidest thing ever. But then you're also like, this guy paid me, so well, as long as my paycheck, as long as my pay is in check, like, okay, if this is your if this is your vision. Then okay. Now, if I have a little bit of pool at whatever promotion I'm at, I'll give my input a little bit, but I won't like be like, no, I'm just not doing that. I'll be like, hey, why don't we do this to make it better? Like, I like your idea, but let's. Here's my idea too. Sure. Maybe we could, you know. So yeah, I, yeah. I had some fun. the first show I had some fun, but we had like five or seven people like no show. Like they they they, they were people uh. canceling because the rain was so bad and a couple other reasons. And so I ended up in a situation where I had one female wrestler and we had to kind of rewrite um, a section of the show. So we had like the intermission and like right at, during the intermission, we got like three minutes left. And Justin Myers is like, hey, man, do you want to you want to hit me with a stunner? And I'm like, oh, no, I can't. Like everyone's gonna think I booked this for myself. You know, like this is the, like this is my thing. Like I went in there to do a move. I'm like, I don't want to. I was like. Is is it easy to do? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> see if you can get your leg this high for the the first kick. And so I actually I've I've had one move in the ring, and uh, I wasn't I wasn't it wasn't a true bump. Like it was you know it was all my own effort. But I I have I have a, a series of shots where I actually hit a stunner on on Justin Myers after he was in a a handicap match against uh, Thunder Kitty and and Lawrence Bonpafo. So. Uh, yeah. that's my entire wrestling career there i'm sure you're you're <laughs> envious of that you just got back from england so uh you know obviously that's a little a little better than monticello indiana but i think we've got a clip from uh from the uk tour here um oh God. If we can get him to pull oh. it up here like i said you keep going outside the ring this is the thing <laughs> well this is a fall count anywhere match so oh my goodness there we go <gasps> what there we go. That was uh, <laughs> you're not taking the the impact there, but uh, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot, do you do the hardcore matches or is this as wild as it gets for you? Uh, I've done two hardcore matches and I'm like, eh, not really for me. Like, um, yeah, I've been doing more like obviously like 
stuff on the outside just because like that one like is false count anywhere and that was their first time ever in that building for women having the false count anywhere so i'm like yeah i'm totally going out for into the fans and that was like their wrestlemania show like so their big show of the year so we went out for that and then um honestly just a lot of girls that i've actually been wrestling with lately they're like not really properly trained and like they don't really know much like to do in the ring so i'm like okay cool i can take you out of the ring and i can literally just like hit you and like kick you or do something simple in front of fans and they'll still get excited because we're closer to you Mm -hmm. like and i can avoid give or like if they're hurt like if they're hurt and they don't want to take moves like okay let's go the outside so i can punch you and like still like look like you know, like we're doing things in front of people because they'll get more excited when it's closer. So, right. Yeah, you know how to make the show better. Do yeah, you- exactly. So all I'm hearing is she's she knows how to make someone who's not good look good, and there so go. I might have yeah. to come out of my own retirement uh, and uh, get in the ring. That would or outside the ring, as it turns out. <laughs> now, Shana, yeah, Shana, do you ever get actually injured? Very. I have been severely injured so many times. Tell us about like, that. I probably should not be. I should probably be done, but I'm just like, uh, why not? One more. It's fine. So what's, what's the worst injury that you've had so far? Um, I've cracked my sternum. Oh, my. Um, yeah, that that was probably the most intense pain I've ever had ever in my life. Wow. Um, yeah, I've I've broken a few ribs uh torn my labrum i've got quite a few concussions that are probably not like yeah i probably will be brain dead in the next like six years but it's fine (laughs) but uh yeah i've like broken fingers uh wrists uh uh oh two time a broken neck so yeah yeah. but you're still going back in (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's like a drug unfortunately like it's like uh, a drug it's it's a high that you can't get rid of like you can literally walk away from it and then you're like oh well crap i, I missed it <laughs> no, you work somewhere that you can get great care right so that's uh you know you got that right out, but... so it kind of works i was gonna ask that if you since you are a nurse i think you said you know what your injury is <laughs> when it happens well yes and no because okay. like doing this so much my body consistently hurts oh so like when i literally like i'll have an injury but i'll be like okay like that's fine i just tweaked it different so when i actually broke my neck i didn't know and i kept wrestling on it um but like i remember having like severe neck pain and like to the point i couldn't move it but like i do that move that i gave to that girl um on the outside where I have her on my shoulders and I push her over my neck. Like I do that move a lot. So I'm like, maybe someone just, you know, dead weighted me and it's hurt. It's hurt. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So it's like, it was, but that was there for a while. Like that pain that it was pretty severe, but I pushed through it. I'm like, it's fine. There's no way like anything. Um, but like when I actually like, like a few weeks, Actually, not even a few weeks, probably a few months after that, I ended up getting knocked out in the middle of the ring during a match and they had to life squad me. Wow. And when they life squatted me, they obviously did all these x-rays and um, mm-hmm. they said, you realize you have a uh, healed fracture in the back of your neck? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I didn't. Thank you. And they're like, yeah. And so they started like pressing down on it and they're like, does this hurt? And I'm like, no they're like okay well then it's healed and i'm like they're like, but you had your your neck was broken i'm like oh cool uh, you have to have a high tolerance for pain very oh, yeah 100 percent. so what, what are the plans coming up here i mean obviously if you get hurt bad enough you're done but otherwise like how long do you plan on doing this obviously we've got a picture up here you you can you can do other things you obviously there's there's uh outlets for you to be creative uh yeah. that, that don't involve getting your neck broken Yes. Um, I mean, it's, I'm honestly like, I have kind of started slowing down a little bit, the more than what I used to do with it. Um, but like, I'm going to go till like, obviously I'm just can't go anymore or until 
I uh, get married and, you know, when I want to start a family, like, um, obviously my ultimate uh, dream is to be a mom. And um, that has almost happened once. And then I was completely ready to hang up the boots. Um, but like, you know, it just wasn't the plan at that moment in time. And um, I like, so now it's like, okay, keep going until the next or until I literally can't do it. Or a doctor tells me, hey, you take one more bump, you're freaking dead. Like, so just stop. <laughs> but, what great, um, but, but if you do have children, you're going to have all these great stories and photos and videos to exactly. show them. They're going to think, wow, my mom's bad. <laughs> exactly uh -huh. and the man that like my boyfriend like he's a he's a wrestler too oh. so like oh. it kind of just works out i mean he, we live in different countries but like um yeah, he uh, each other <laughs> exactly so at least like no matter what it's going to be a freaking wrestling family whether we like it or not <laughs> so this kid who, my future child is going to grow up around the business oh, yeah so be perfect. Well, I know so in perfect. comedy, yeah, in comedy, it's very top heavy. People think if you've had a special on Comedy Central, you must have a lot of money. And I know that sometimes you can get those guys for 200 bucks on a Wednesday night, you know, that kind of thing. So like, like, uh, I, I know that, um, without, uh, telling too much of your business here, I know there's probably ways that you would like to be supported, uh, by people that are, uh, checking you out. So tell people how they can uh, follow you on, on different websites, ways that they can, I know you sell sometimes your, your gear that, you know, you have ways you can be sponsored to, uh, to, to be able to keep traveling and doing all this kind of stuff. Uh, how, how can people uh, help you out with your dream here? So um, you can either find, I'm on all the social media platforms like Instagram, Ashana underscore read um, Twitter or X now, I guess is what it's called. Um, is I think that's at Shauna Reed 93. Um, Facebook, just type in my name. Um, yeah, I if you ever want to purchase like eight by tens, um, I do sell gear a lot, um, things like that. Like you just message me, private message me. I don't have a site for that. Um, so just private message me and then I'll mail, I'll mail anywhere, even out of the US. Um, so all my prices are pretty much different, but yeah, it all sponsors me to, you know, be able to continue to travel as much as I've been getting to. And, you know, um, going across the pond is tends to be more of the dream now. So. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's some things that uh, people wouldn't realize how England's different than the United States. Like as we wrap up here, there are a couple of ways that, uh, that you can, can say, Hey, you, you, you don't know until you go there. Yes. So one, no free refills. They don't oh, do that over there. Okay. <laughs> um, That's they have like a, this sugar tax. So all of their like sodas are like no sugar. And mm. so like it, but then the thing is that they'll have like, so what we would think of as like a Sprite that is like flat. That's oh. their regular Sprite. <laughs> and then like, then they have a diet Sprite. Oh. I'm like, how is this more diet? Than this? <laughs> um, and then obviously, you know, being on the wrong side of the road and like their their uh, steering wheel being on the opposite side. Um, and then over there, it's kind of funny because you know how like in the U.S. we um, we pretty much give each other our space and stuff. Like we're at the grocery store, we're not all. On, when I tell you, these people don't give a crap. They will put you are in the way of something they want at like like you are looking at like the baloney or something. These people will push you out of the freaking oh, way, wow. and they don't give a hair in the world wow. like when i get off the plane in the uk and i'm just going down an escalator like i'm like oh yeah i'm in the uk because they have no per there's no personal space in the uk <laughs> they're like really? move galloway wow <laughs> wow it's yeah well, but i love it there I'm, I'm enjoying it so yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we'll see you on a on a big card from the UK. So you know, WrestleMania is there, and and William Regal's being inducted into the Hall of Fame or something. You know, there's some kind of fantastic scenario. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you know, this is most of us as artists that uh, you know we're 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 figuring out a way to get it done while we've got a, a shoot job too. So that's uh, definitely right. appreciate you. Uh, you know, after a long shift, coming in and talking to us, and hopefully. Uh, this introduced you to a couple more people and, and uh, maybe some, some sponsors or some, some fans that are watching online here. It was great chatting yeah. with you, Shauna. You too. Awesome. And if I never do book another Mad Hatter wrestling show, you know, may have to, may have to get in the ring with you there. Cause you told me you could make me look good. So that's uh... a, <laughs>
that I want to see. <laughs> She's going to be like, that's not what I said. That's not. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you another time then. Thanks for calling in. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Shana Reed. And then what was the, the, was it Buddy was the, the name of the dog? Did I, I forget I think it already? So. I'm like that I think it was. with dogs' names, just like yeah. human names. But yeah. uh, she was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Only. Um. Yeah, I I was so surprised about how she looked coming home from being a nurse. <laughs> She's got different personas. It was very obvious. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh, Showbiz. I remember one of the first uh, shows I ever went to, uh, independent wrestling. It was the Intergalactic Wrestling Federation. I came to Crawfordsville, <laughs> Indiana. And I remember when I got in there, I got like a cheese hot dog at the front desk. You know, they, they, they had the, the crock pot set up. And it was like, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, like junior high junior varsity you know snack bar snack bar kind of so they're they're just it's mom pa you know pickles and and candy bars and all this kind of stuff and then um in like the third match she comes out and she's wearing like an evening gown and she's called (laughs) lady luck and she's uh you know she's a a, a, the valet for dice man ronnie vegas who was like the headliner there and it was i was like lady luck that's the same woman that like sold me a cheese dog and sold me my ticket so um and that's, a, you know, when, a, when Greg Hahn show, either Riot or I will be checking someone in at the door and we'll also be yes. selling the beer mm-hmm. in that place. So, like, it's, uh, you know, it's 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 yeah. it's lonely at the top. And a lot of times <laughs> the rest of us, we got to do we got to wear multiple hats. So mm-hmm. um, definitely uh, look up to somebody that's hustling like that. But also, like, I, I can't take bumps. So that's that's really cool to talk to people that are, you know, pro wrestling, doing things that I would never do myself. Yes. Yeah, she was impressive. So awesome! This weekend we've got Ed Bassmaster. That's the uh, the, the only one I'm going to recap. Besides, uh, uh, but, you know, we went through like nine different artists, but this is the one that you can still get to <laughs> this weekend. Uh, eight twenty four in Knoxville, Tennessee. Eight twenty five in Pikeville, Kentucky, and eight twenty six in Ironton, Ohio. The next weekend, Greg Hahn in Nebraska, North Platte, not Platte and Phillips, Nebraska. So uh, all of our stuff's at madhattershows.com. You can stream us anywhere that good podcasts are played. And on Facebook, you can go back and watch the videos over. We've got a nice little collection Mm -hmm. here. We're going to be back, I believe, on September the 5th with Josh Prey. So do mark that on your calendar, and we will see you next time. Thanks for having me.